Good morning to all of you. A warm welcome to our Zoom webinar organized by GMOA and Society for Health Research and Innovation. Today, our lecture is going to be on a non-medical topic but valuable on socio-economic aspect of our life, money versus life. Kindly mute your microphone and turn off the camera during the presentation and use the chat box to clear your doubts at the end of this session. Now, I would like to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Tenuan Vikramasinghe financial instructor of GMOA and a senior medical officer, cardiothoracic intensive care unit at Sri Jawadnapur General Hospital. Over to you, Dr. Tenua. Sorry, sorry, there was a, some technical difficulty. Good morning, all of you. Uh, I think a different topic today, an unclinical topic, a different aspect I'm going to talk to you all. Uh, it was glad to see that I have been informed that there are about 180 plus people who have registered for the topic. And for the moment, there are 105 and counting. So uh, just before starting the actual session, I will just, uh, I don't think I need a formal uh, introduction about me because most of the audience known to me, at, uh, they know me because I have been active in uh, this Facebook and the answering sessions and I have conducted few e-code lectures for you all. And also I have uh, delivered similar kind of lecture during the Good Intern program last year. Uh, during the lecture, I will just brief about myself to tell that, uh, the, to compare myself with you all. For the time being, I'm not going to do a formal introduction. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you today is that being a doctor, being a medical profession, some of you may be senior to me, some of you may be parallel to me, and some most of may be junior to me. Somehow, uh, while talking to you all in different forums and while we are doing different uh, discussions with all of you, the point that we have understood is that most of us are not stabilized in the aspect of finance. Although we draw a salary at a, one of the most highest salary grades in Sri Lankan salary scale, uh, I'm not telling the highest, I'm not talking about the private sector, but if you talk about the government sector salary scales, which I am very fond of because I have been uh, I have been uh, answering the things about the salaries for the people. So we are one of the highest category, highest salary drawing category in Sri Lankan government sector. Being that so, when we enter into the career, some of, some of us may be having different commitments in our life. People may be having to have to look after parents. People may be have to look after their differently able kids. They may be having other commitment, a whole lot of stuff. But still, we know that how much we are going to draw from our monthly salary. We have a rough idea that how much we are going to draw. And also we have a rough idea if we are married, how much of salary our spouse is going to draw. So we have a rough idea about our income when we start our career. We are not just blind and coming to this field and, and uh, feel that is this the amount that we are drawing? It's not like that. We all know that how much we are drawing. We all know that how much our spouses are going to draw. And we all know that whether we have inheritance or not, whether we have something from our parents or not. Being knowing this, all those things, the one of the main complaint of our doctors is that we can't save money. At the end of the month, once you draw the salary at 25th of each month, by 30th, half of the salary has been deducted for loans and another portion has gone for credit cards and other stuff and day-to-day -day expenses are just coming. So at the end of the month, you are again burdened with a financial hurdle. So what I'm going to talk today is, as we all know our inputs, as we all know how much we are earning. If we can think about the expenses, if we can control our expenses, there is a whole lot of scope that we can save some amount of money. This is not the same. This is not similar for every one of you. I'm telling you that we are from different classes. We are having different uh, 
type of families and we are leading different uh, different level of life still majority of us are having a similar condition in our life similar commitments similar responsibilities so if we think that our input is 10 if we are confident that we are getting 10 every month and if we are expensing if we are spending eight every month they, there is no any argument that the amount we are going to save is only two so you know about the income the only thing that you can control that you can manage is your output the expenses that you are going to do during the month so what i am going to talk about is how to manage your expenses how to manage your expenses during the your life and while being managing these expenses and income how to enjoy your life i'm uh, taking this word as enjoy because if you talk to 100 doctors if you do a survey on 100 doctors i'm pretty sure that majority of tox doctors are not enjoying their life they are just living their life i have experience I have personal experience with me because i've been working in four hospitals now this is the fourth one i'm working sorry fifth one so in each hospital i have different set of experience most of the people are running behind the life running behind a salary running behind some money and time starting from 5 30 am in the morning and till 11 o'clock 12 o'clock at midnight but they do not enjoy their life that is that is that is one of the main reason why our doctors are not satisfied in their service they just live their life they just they just carry on with their commitments and responsibilities rather than enjoying their life so what i want to emphasize today is while being doing a job while drawing one of the most highest salary grades in sri lanka telling that you can't save and telling that you can't enjoy with this salary complaining that the amount you are earning is too low or complaining that the amount that you are uh, that you are spending that you can't spend as you want is it's just a myth it's just a failure of your management i am not blaming any one of you i'm not going to scold anyone i'm not going to tell that you are doing wrong anything but i want you to manage stuff more efficiently and one of the most important thing i want to tell is during the, this session maybe one hour maybe one hour and 15 minutes i'm going to deliver you certain tips certain uh, things to do that you have to start from tomorrow if you are going to start these things from next month onwards telling that are you are the disease uh, 9th of may i'll just wait for another 21 days and i'll start from june i'm sure pretty sure that it don't it's not going to work so don't wait till next month you can start it from tomorrow if you feel like this is very positive if you feel like you have to do this and you will gain something from this one you need to start from tomorrow and i am not telling that this this the figures the stuff that i am going to deliver here are valid for every one of you this might different from your different because you are from different families different aspects and you may be having different commitments so you can adjust these things according to your need you can just adjust what as, as, as i'm delivering i'll tell you you can adjust this stuff but i'm going to talk 11 tips for you 11 aspects that you have to consider on if you can start from tomorrow the results will not come from day after you have to practice it at least for few months if you can practice this for few months and if you can do it in a really good way in a in a very faithful way you because sometimes you can start the things and drop things out you can just finish it off two three days you will feel i am need this is not going to work you can stop it but if you think that this is going to work the results won't come in next week it will take at least three to six months for results to come this is my personal experience what i have done and what i have gained so i will just in you know, deliberate you why I have been asked to come and deliver this session, why I have been chosen. So I will just in, in, uh, explain that also. Then you can compare where are you with me. Okay, we'll uh, just go into the, we'll start the things. I was uh, reading certain uh, 
literature last few days and before this the similar the same kind of lecture i was delivering about six months back for the good interns for that also i was reading certain uh, literature then i found that this frightening factor that in whole world not only in sri lanka if you compare different fields the medical profession the doctors are the worst financial managers out of the lot so it might be a little bit of frightening factor but we are the worst financial managers we not only in sri lanka comparing all the others in, in worldwide figures there are a few uh, statistics also but i am not going to uh, give you the statistics because i don't want to make this session a boring one i want this one to be a very interactive one because previously i was talking to audience of maybe 500 people which was very interactive because they were interacting with me i could ask questions they could reply but now i am speaking to this blank screen which is a little bit odd for me but still we have to adapt with the situation so i'm not going to uh, give you things that uh, make things worse so if you know that we are worst financial managers out of the lot it is while claiming that we are one of the most highest iq people in this field so we are having the highest iq at least we claim that we have the highest iq while claiming that we have highest iq we are the worst financial managers so where is the point that we have gone wrong this is the important thing that we have to take to our mind we have to plan things and deliver things so where we have gone wrong is i have read the read few articles and certain sri lankan articles and certain international articles also even last night i was reading it says that the most significant factor is it is not the amount that we earn as i told you previously at i was preparing the background it is not the amount that we earn but the amount that we waste there are a whole lot of money that we are wasting that dragging out of us that money that which we could have saved so as we are worst managers we can't keep our finance intact so although we are earning a lot we may be having our monthly salary from hospital and ministry we may be having some other incomes we may be doing extra private practices we may be having money from our parents and family we may be having money from our partners we may be having different businesses out of this still why we are worst financial managers is we are wasting a lot so for this waste i just want to find out why this waste is happening only in doctors because if you compare the parallel people who was with you in your school with you in your class maybe maybe with your neighbor, the neighbors of you they don't waste as we do so what is the reason while reading sri lankan articles i found two major reasons why we are wasting money why we are uh, not saving enough the first reason i could find is we the doctors have very high expectations compared to other fields which we can control if we have a will so expectations means that maybe you are parallel person who is in your who was in with you school is satisfied with a ordinary house ordinary vehicle and ordinary shirt and ordinary jewelry but being a doctor being a uh, one of the highest salary drawing category in sri lanka we just can't satisfy with these ordinary things we have very high level of expectations if you want to go and buy a car some of the parallel people of you can't even afford for a car they just travel by taxis and buses and all although they wear a good attire and go for office every day and just uh, just having a presence look in and good outlet and having a good customer although they are having like they are drawing a lower salary than us and they are traveling in taxis and buses but we can't tolerate that we think that we need a vehicle and the vehicle also should be a modern one no ultra modern one so i i got my vehicle during my post internship after completing internship but nowadays 
when people are entering to the internship the first first ambition of them is to get a good car i have i have uh, signed these loan applications last few months for people for this gmoa people's bank loan i have been signing for that so i have found that most of them are very junior people while entering to the service they just want to have this expectation fulfilled so one is the main reason is we have high expectations when we go to a wedding function just imagine one of your friend your same friend will be giving a gift of 2000 rupees and you feel very bad to give a gift of 2000 rupees you feel that your doctor can ek pela 2000 ekak dila madi wage so that is the thing that drains money out of you i am not telling that live poorly go in a bicycle foot bicycle or nothing like that we have to have a luxury life that's true we have to have a life with dignity that's also true but high expectation means high wastage so if you can manage your expectations up to a level which is affordable for you it is one of the main thing that you can save money so this is the one reason why we are losing money from our end although we earn 10 we lose 8 because we have very high expectations the second reason i found is that we enter into this service in very late life if you compare the other fields of your friends who has done math so commerce so art so like that they finish their a levels and it stuff in 19 years of age or 20 years age of maximum then they follow up their degrees sometimes they go for masters and do phd's also and they finish things by 24 25 maximum and by 30 years they are stable in their service they are stable in their life because they have worked for 5 years earned for 5 years and they have a substantial savings with you so they are just stable financially but what happened to our doctors we finished our a levels with same time as others maybe 19 years 20 years maximum sometimes people get repeated that's true and we wait for about 6 months or 1 year to get into the university faculty merit order delays that stuff this stuff whole lot, lot of wastage of time and after that we are following the they claim that this is one of the highest most difficult courses we are doing a double degree in five and a half years time five years time it drags into five and a half years because of this campus problems that strike this strike all the way so we are finishing in five and a half years and what happened then is then we have to wait for another six months or one year to get internship so our degree is coupled with the internship we can't just go and practice without internship so we are compelled to work for another one year internship and after one year internship also you will be treated with the rho the intermediate position until you become a grade preliminary grade medical officer so the time gap in between these procedures the wastage that we have to face in these procedures is whole lot of time so because of that we enter into the earning field at the age of 30 or maybe 31 sometimes 29 30 31 we are starting a so when you start earning at the age of 30, we have a very high urge to finish things quickly. We want to complete our house quickly. We want to buy a vehicle quickly. We want to start businesses. We have a whole lot of expectations in us, but we have less time. We start comparing ourselves with our colleagues and think that this fellow is, has completed his house, but I have just not started even. So I should do it quickly. This one is also my age, I am also same age. I, I don't have a vehicle yet, but this one is driving two vehicles. So I should buy at least one. So this urge to finish the quick, to finish and complete things quickly drains money out of us. It is the second most important factor. There were about 30 factors I could uh, go through, but I got, just got only these two factors to explain you why we are worst financial managers when comparing to other fields. So you have very high expectations, which you can control. And we enter into the service at a later age. So we have a different amount of urge than others to complete things quickly. So we get trapped in loans and credit cards and all those of financial hurdles because of this thing. 
so out of these two things one is modifiable the other one is non modifiable the first one the expectations that we are having that we can modify that one if we have the will but the age of entering into the earning service is still not modifiable but i have to tell you that our gmo is having discussions with the education ministry and we are in a action plan to produce a medical officer produce mbbs graduate at the age of 22 years the education secretary and the government is very favorable on this point so in future this might get change but for the moment it is like that okay so this is why we are worse financial managers this is why we are wasting lot of money so at the end of this session i am going to tell you how to save this wasting so why i have been chosen for to deliver this lecture i should thank the gm and shri team also for choosing this this points i have been continuously delivering this type of non medical stuff for you all i will just brief about myself and i will tell what i have gained till today so then you can compare yourself what is your position comparing to me uh, you can think that some of you may be above me some of you may be parallel to me some of you may be lower than me so i just don't want you to be inspired on me i don't want you to be admire on me so i want you to be a person that you can be inspired of and i can i just want you to be a person who can be proud of yourself otherwise just uh, comparing myself and you i am not going to let you die this is not a point to let you down i just want you to think that how much you can do okay this is a brief of me i am now 38 8 years of old uh, age and uh, i am from a very middle class family my father is a banker and mother is a retired teacher actually retired principal uh, i am a all royalist although i have started my education from a small school in kandana and uh, came to royal after scholarships at grade 6 and i have uh, graduated from a foreign medical university now i have in service for 10 years and 10 plus is running i started my internship at dgh polon narwa then moved to walachen as mo psychiatry then at gampole at as sho pediatrics then in kandy as a medical officer at coronary care unit now at sri jayawardenepur hospital uh, as the cardiothoracic intensive care medical officer and most probably moving out of jayawardenepur end of this year so what is significant about me is i am not doing any private practice early in uh, my during my walachena time i have done a small pp but i have uh, just dropped that off now i am not doing any private practice and i have not utilized any of my inheritance for my expenses so whatever i have today whatever i am uh, so having today is just earned by myself and small part from my partner developed by myself and spent by myself and most importantly enjoyed by myself so this is why i have been asked to come and deliver this session without doing private practice without utilizing any of the inheritance i have completed major three tasks that you may be planning to complete so if we uh, think about the ambitions we are having when we start our career maybe all levels a levels at a time that we think about our future if we uh, concise the facts what we want actually from our life what we are expecting what our parents are expecting what the family and society expecting from us is we can just shortlist that into three or four topics the number one is we expect that we have to live in a reasonable house we want to build a luxury house abi hamom kata avata thiyena vetti line da tanakko ne so we expect somewhere to feel free feel homely i'm sure that you all know that who are staying in rented places and maybe some other places parents places or some brothers sisters places you don't feel that homely feeling as of your own house that is the true fee, true uh, fact you have to have your own stuff you have to bath from your own water to feel that you are homely so we all have a ambition at a time of start earning 
to build a reasonably good house say that a luxury house for a doctor and the second factor that we all expect is we want a reasonable vehicle we want a good car we want a good vehicle to travel on and number 3 factor third factor in sri lankan context is we want our kids to be well educated so if we if any one of you can fulfill these three facts if we are if we have reached these three facts i am sure that we all can sleep peacefully at night we don't feel bad if we can complete these three stuff number 1 is house number 2 good vehicle and number 3 is reasonably good education for our kids and if you if you start explaining these things there may be 100 and 1000 and 10000 things that you want to fulfill in your life but as a matter of fact if you can fill these three things i am sure your burden is 90% gone your responsibility your commitment is 90% gone so at 38 years old and at a service of 10 years i have completed two of these factors and completing the third factor the one is i have completed constructing a modern house uh, you may be uh, explain this as a boasting part i don't mind you can think it as a boasting part or you can take it as a motivation factor that is up to you so i have uh, constructed a modern house at aturugiriya which uh, area is about 4400 square feet three story house and which cost about 225 lakhs for me uh, and i have a reasonable vehicle i am not telling very ultra luxury one but i am satisfied with and i am planning to upgrade that one in very recent future so those two factors i am okay i am satisfied and i have a 6 years 5 and 1/2 years old kid so i have started educating him and he is going to a reputed school and i am sure that he'll be i'll be doing the amount that i should do for him i am financially okay for that while doing all those things the best part is i have a substantial saving also with me for an emergency i'm not going to tell you the figures that might be frightening or that might be you may be feel bad so i feel i have completed these three things and i am having a reasonable amount of saving with me for an emergency so the rest of things i am going to do and i will be having will be bonus because that main three targets of life of every one of us is these three things so that is why i have been asked to come and tell you how i have achieved this amount i how i have gone to these goals what is this what was the secret behind this so before start going into the facts i have to tell that there is no any very hard things that i have done there is no any aeronautical science or rocket stuff in here no nano technology this is simple stuff that you have to have in your mind the main thing is you have to have a strong stuff inside you to reach these things so i have given a short brief of me so you can now compare where are you with my we so you may be above me you may be similar to me you may be below me you may be have reached much higher goals than me you may be in much lower position than me so whatever it is i want you to be a person who can admire on yourself when you go to sleep at night if you are happy about yourself that is what i want i am pretty sure majority of you are not satisfied with you you may be showing others telling others and verbally and in written you may be telling that you have reached this stuff and you have done this you have this post graduate i have this money this vehicle and you are maybe riding one of the luxurious thing but still if you ask from yourself you know that you are not satisfied so i want you to be satisfied on yourself okay so this is the what i explained you what each of us want a luxury house i'll show you a small photo of my house if you want to have an idea this is my house at aturugiriya about 1 and 1/2 years i have completed this one uh 
<coughs> okay, so and luxury vehicle, that is what the second thing that we want and good education for our kids. Right. So I'm going to tell you what is, if I ask what is life, what do you think about the life? How do you feel about the life is about 141 people who are in the gathering will tell different 141 definitions of life. They will think, they will tell that this is the life that we that we want and this is the life that we are having and this should be the life that we expect. I was looking for a good definition for this life because I am going to, I am going to deliver the lecture on life and money. You know? So I just want to give you a reasonable definition of life. While reaching, while searching for these uh, definitions, I got a good one in Collins. So we know, we all know that we most of all of us have, uh, we have declared deaths in our wards and clinical setups, ETUs, ICUs, and everywhere. We have death confirmations we have done. So what we assess in uh, death is we listen for heart sounds. We listen for breathing auscultations. We feel for pulses. We look for pupils. And these are the signs of life that we are looking for. If these signs of life are absent, we just declare that this person is dead and done. But breathing, beating heart, pulsating pulses, central and peripheral cyanosis, are these the factors that we are going to determine about our life? Is this the true life? That is what I want to ask from you. Breathing and breathing hard, beating hard does not mean that is a life. The life should have different qualities and different facts to be, they have to be fulfilled. It's to be called as a life. People, almost everyone who has born having a beating heart and a breathing lung and a pulsating pulses and constricting and uh, this thing having a pupil. So every one of us having, even the animals and all those stuff are having these signs of life. But is it the life? That's what my question is. The way I look at this is that is not the life. You can either breathe or you can either live. So in Collins dictionary, they say that the life is the quality which people, animal and plant have when they are not dead and which objects and substance do not have. So just if you go through the wordings of this definition, there's a word called quality, which people and animal and plants have. What we are lacking here is, what we are lacking as doctors is this quality. We have all the signs of living from the start until we die at age of 70 or 72, 75. We have the signs of life but we don't have this quality of life. Most of our people, the problem is we don't have the quality. We don't enjoy our life. We just breathe and live. So what I'm going to tell you is, the most of the complaint will be coming from you all is, we don't have time. We don't have money to enjoy. So just we are running behind the time and money to complete our commitments and responsibilities. This is the main complaint that we are having. So if you think that the life is a quality stuff that you have to enjoy these things, if you have the will and urge, definitely you can. I have been doing and I have seen people who are doing this. So this is what I just asked. The golden question is, are we living or just breathing? We can live or we can just breathe the very significant factor, the Bob Marley was saying that some people feel the rain and others just get wet. So most of our doctors just get wet. They don't feel the rain. They don't feel the life. That is what I have. I am different from others. While earning, working and doing all the stuff that you all are doing, I have a fair amount of time and fair amount of cost that I can spare for enjoyment also. So I want you all to feel the rain rather than just getting wet. Okay, I'm going to give you a small marketing concept 
it is a unique value proposition that if you can think about this concept and if you can build up on this this is the first theory that you have to think of as i am reading for the masters degree in marketing aspect i just want to tell you this one the unique value proposition is what do you mean by unique value proposition it is what makes you different from others the simple thing is that the unique uvp is what make you different from others and what make you superior from others all of us are born with similar things and we are grown up in different cultures and families and now we are come to a same field we are working as medical professions different grades different ages and different unit different part of the island but what makes you superior from others is the unique value proposition it doesn't come from birth you have to develop it yourself a unique value proposition you have to develop yourself and the most important thing is it is why should you be treated better than others so you expect people to treat you in a different way every one of us when you go to a society when you are in the ward or when you are in the class or that thing this thing you expect people to treat you better you expect some sort of respect from others you expect some sort of uh, gratitude from others so this unique value proposition is the factor that should be inside you that make you different from others and make you superior and why should you be treated better than others so if you are financially stable if you are enjoying your life you have a uvp in you so the thing that you have to develop is you should have a uvp inside you you should think of uvp inside you it might be anything it may be your appearance it may be your hair cut it may be your accent of talking it may be you the clothes that you are wearing maybe the jewelry is that you are thing maybe the way you think maybe you way you talk and behave anything can be uvp but what i am going to tell you is the sustainable uvp should be the way you think the way you perceive things the way you deliver things not the physical things that they are around you so the think about yourself and just know have a note what is the unique value proposition you have everyone should have a uvp inside you if you have a uvp inside you you can develop on that. so after finishing this one just start think what is the uvp inside you i don't want you to tell that one to anyone sometime the uvp may be a very private thing that you can't tell anyone still it's okay but have that uvp inside you and if you don't have a uvp think about a uvp that you should have you must have from tomorrow onwards right this is the small example of uvp why you are different superior and you should be differently treated better treated than others so are we earning enough this is the golden question everyone is asking api hamba karana at the salary ek ati the is it enough if you compare with certain private sector managers and all they may be earning 10 times 20 times more than you but 99% of sri lankan community is earning less than you i'm pretty sure on that and you can go with the statistics so if we are not confident that we are earning enough so can we save so i'm going to tell you i'm going to show you a list of figures of mine so don't go and tell these things outside because it is my personal figures i'm going to tell you whether we are earning enough and whether we can save okay this is a balance sheet of mine if you can just read this one the top part says my income and the bottom half says my expenses the middle part then lower part says the amount that i could save the internship salary i drew for 12 months 28000 per month and i got about 3 lakhs from that one i just want to tell you that at that time it was 28000 now you are earning much much higher than this one the intern salary is much comfortable now so you can have much more than this 
and post intern salary the running 11th year of my service so if i average the amount i have drawn per month it comes around 175000 so when you calculate that one it comes to 230 lakhs just imagine for 10 years 230 lakhs and my partner was working in people's bank now she's re she's resigned from there she worked there for about 7 8 years from her i got about 48 lakhs her savings actually i have not utilized this money she is having this with her but that is one of the assets i have and she had a saving for about 5 million with her and the other letter p is i had a vehicle permit 5 years back which i didn't utilize because i had a reasonable new vehicle at that time so i gave it to one of my relation and i got 19 lakhs for that one and the bank property loan i got 30 lakhs so this is the rough balance of my income for the last 11 years 10 and a half years so it comes to 380 good lakhs just imagine 380 lakhs if you calculate yourself i'm pretty sure that most of you have married to doctors and most of you are planning to marry a doctor and maybe my wife has resigned now and she worked only for 8 years 7 8 years but your spouse may be working for lifetime and maybe may have drawn a much higher salary than this so think how much you have earned for this 10 years 380 lakhs and the major expenses i had to go through i had a i had to construct the house as i told you which cost me about roughly 200 lakhs and the vehicle 40 and most important part is the number 3 and number 4 the foreign tours the for for the fast 6 and 1/2 is 7 years i have traveled for travel to 6 yes 6 countries six different countries which my with my family which costed me about 10 lakhs and local hotels if i calculate i have gone for 23 local hotels during last few years and that cost me about 5 lakhs so just imagine after spending this much amount of money for recreation also after completing a house having a reasonable vehicle the total expense was 255 lakhs so if you i am telling you that the amount that you could have saved is 125 lakhs just for 10 years 125 lakhs i am pretty sure that your income is much higher than this because you have start your in this intern salary is higher now the spouse is working and the other incomes maybe you are do you may be doing private practice there may be other incomes for you so if you have managed this stuff well definitely you could have save amount more than this amount if you are junior to me by 10 years definitely you can save more than this so that means 95000 rupees per month for all other expenses for your food for your petrol and whatever it is you want you have 95000 so are you compl are you going to complain about this salary because if you go to a teacher and as i'm not going to let down the teachers professions your teachers salary but if you go and talk to them a father being a teacher is drawing maybe 50000 per month they are also having two three kids and they are doing education for that one and is doing all the expenses as we do not at the level as we are but still they are doing all those things. with 50000 earning total income and we have 95000 spared for us and can't we save from this one do, do you need magic to save some amount from this money i'm pretty sure that majority of you have not gone for into a six tours or local hotels 23 hotels during the 10 years service i am having so you could have saved more so what i want to show you here is these figures are not 100% accurate stuff but there is no lies inside here this is the gross factors i had and i had to spend and this is the amount i could have saved this is the amount i have for a month to save so out of 95000 you just calculate how much you want for your food and stuff for month and how much you can save for a month 
so this is the only problem is management financial management is the stuff that we are not doing that is why we are wasting money okay that's what i told you the similar things if married to a doctor and if you are doing private practice and if you have inherited assets from your parents and all so you have more income and definitely you will be you should be able to save more so i as i told you earlier don't inspire on me don't admire on me but be a person that admiration can be done on yourself okay i'm going to tell you four things that you should have in you you should need to be inside you to be the person that i told you if you want to be the person in your dreams you definitely have to have these four facts not very difficult things but this these are the essential stuff the number one is strong mind that is essentially you should have that one if you don't have a strong mind if you think that if you are having a deviating mind if you think that that person thinks right i am wrong are i thana vidya tamai hari mata ediya honda tinna if you have that inferior complex you can't run this one. better to log off and go if you don't have a strong mind because you can't do it you have to have a pretty strong mind api kiyanne kondak thiyenna one kiyala you have to have that if you think something very positive one at night and in the morning when you wake up you feel like ayyo ba ada anda ba ada nidaga wahino paayeno you can't do this so just don't try waste your stuff and energy just sleep and do your normal stuff so have a strong mind if you don't have a strong mind think how you can have a strong mind so brain power your mind power thinking capacity the amount of the stuff you have inside your neurons is the fact of this so strong mind you have to have we claim that we are the highest iq people in the sri lankan society so we have completed the one of the most difficult mbbs course and we have completed the hardest period of internship so definitely all of you have this strong mind if you have not destroyed that so just think about that what you had in your faculty time what you had in your internship time if you have not having that one now you have iatrogenically destroyed that so think about this thing number one strong mind is essential number two is you should comfort yourself rather than the others most of us the most of us the problem is we try to comfort others we don't want to comfort ourselves we are thinking of other people's mind anit cannot hitane vidhi hari nadda kela hitena not about ourselves say that you are going to go to go and buy a phone i am not going to tell that it buy a cheap phone you can buy a phone of your desire you can go and select by buy a phone if you want to buy a phone of 100000 go and buy it but i am telling you if you don't want to buy a phone of 100000 don't do it because others are telling the what we sri lankan people do what we do is before we purchase something we just get whole lot of opinions from all we just go through the internet search for things and we ask from our colleagues brothers friends until we get soup of ideas we ask for opinions which will distract you from your true need so if you are going to buy a phone decide it yourself and make it a phone that comfort you ఫోన్ ఎక్కడ గండి అనే మంగి అనగ మంగ ఫోన్ ఎక్కడ కాల్ ఎక్కడ తీయలేక యాలు అంగ ఎంగ హండి పా అంటే మా మేక గండి అనే గండదు వై షుడ్ యు ఆస్క్ దట్ ఇఫ్ యు ఆర్ సటిస్ఫైడ్ విత్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ ఇఫ్ యు ఆర్ ఫైన్ విత్ యువర్ కంఫర్టబిలిటీ ఇఫ్ యు థింక్ దట్ దిస్ ఫోన్ విల్ సూట్ యు ఇట్ విల్ డెలివర్ వాట్ యు వాంట్ వై యు వాంట్ ద ఒపీనియన్ ఆఫ్ అదర్స్ వై యు ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సటిస్ఫై అదర్ పీపుల్ దే డోంట్ కమ్ అండ్ క్లియర్ యువర్ డెప్స్ దే డోంట్ కమ్ అండ్ క్లియర్ యువర్ లోన్స్ they don't come and help you when you are in financial hurdle so if you want to buy if you have a need just go and buy for your need just don't try to satisfy others this includes parents and guardians and adults and others also they have a different aspect they have a different feeling about you they think that having a phone of 100000 is good for you rather than a 35000 
that is the apparentship that is the adultship but you should satisfy yourself not the others so if you buy things you do not need soon you will have to sell things that you need just remember this quote if you are going to buy the things that you don't need you soon will be have to sell what you need so number 1 comfort yourself number 2 comfort yourself not the others so number 3 is you should have a urge to feel the life the thing that i was repeatedly telling from beginning most of our people have do not have this urge to feel the life so they just breathe and live they don't enjoy the life so i'm pretty sure that with the environment that we are living the things that we are eating and the things we are breathing and drinking we are not going to live more than 70 75 years that is the simple factor we are happy or not that is a simple thing so have you calculated this 70 years how much we have gone and how much we have 70 years means just 840 months so 840 months so we are going to live only 840 months from our birth so you know how fast a month pass by we get a salary of 25th of this month and next salary comes in very quick time so month has gone so 840 of them as a total so with your age just count how many remaining for you so i am 38 now i will be having 32 more so more than half has gone so just think are we not going to feel the life are we not going to enjoy the life even now are we just going to breathe and live that is my simple question so calculate how many months you have to you can live 70 or 70 if you think you are going to live 90 just calculate as 90 but i am calculating at 70 so 840 months more than half gone how much left are we going to breathe or are we going to live so number 4 is you need to differentiate your needs and greeds this is one of the major stuff that we are losing our money we don't go behind our needs we go behind our greeds if you go to a shopping supermarket or shopping place or somewhere there are thing two three things there are three type of things there are things that we need there are things that we want and there are things that we like all these three stuffs are there in your shopping mall wherever you go irida polakata giyat mecharai and if you go to this uh, uptown candy it is same you have all these three stuff so there are needs there are wants and there are likes so if you can't differentiate your need and greed you will be trapped in financial issues once you get trapped once if you get trapped this month that trap will be dragged and dragged for years and years that you can't come out of that so you have to differentiate your needs wants and likes think about this one i am not going to explain each word so you you also have to have some work at home no so one thing i told you the unique value proposition about you you should have one you should think about that thing and just calculate how many months that you have to live you can live and just differentiate the things that you need and that you are greed of if you can differentiate these two things from each other it will save you a lot of money so this is a simple thing the amount of water is not that not what is important what is important is how much you need although you have 5 liters can the the amount that you need to satisfy your thirst is the need the amount of water is that is not the fact so if you when you go for shopping when you go for buying when you go for this stuff think about the amount that you need not the amount that is available okay then i am going to that i have given the stuff to think of and i have delivered you the stuff that you should have in you and i am going to tell you 11 different points that you should gain inside you that you should develop and you should think of and you should plan of number one factor 
I just I don't want to explain this too much. No smoking and no alcohol, please. If you have already smoking and alcohol consuming, please stop that one. As a medical profession, I don't have to tell about the adverse effects of these liver functions and lung pathologies and COVID pneumonia. I'm not going to describe. You know the stuff sometimes better than me. So stop that one. I'm not telling females are not smoking, females are not alcohol. I've gone through a lot of females who are consuming these things. So valid for both of you. Please stop this one. If you are not on to this one, please don't start. And number two, I just want all of you to start write all of your expenses and income. You maybe think that is a difficult task, but I'm going to tell you this does not cost you even 10 seconds per day. If you are getting used to this one, if you start writing it from today onwards, it will take only 10 seconds which worth much, much more than that. You will save a lot of money with this one. Believe me, I'm not asking you to reduce any cost. I'm not telling you to cut any cost at the end of the day. You don't have to worry about any expense that you have done throughout the day, but just document what you have spent and how much you have earned. I'll show you that how I have written that one. For an example, so this is how I have written what I have earned. If you, if I go through from top, this is from the first, my intern salary starting from July, 2009. I have written all my expenses up to today. Sorry, income. I have written all the income here. If you come down, it is April, 2021. That is last month salary. Until that time I have written my income. So, this takes only 10 seconds. If you start writing today, the amount that you are going to earn every month when you get, if you have only the salary, that is simple as that. You can get the salary slip and document it. You have all kinds of smartphones which you, which you don't use for your benefits. So you may be going to write in a book. You may be going to enter in a computer. You may be going to enter in your phone, whatever it is, don't lie yourself. Don't do this. If you're going to lie yourself, that will be end of this session. You no need of following this one. So be true to yourself, be fair to yourself and start writing your income. Starting from today, it will cost you maybe 30, 40 rupees to get a short, small notebook and a pen, keep it in somewhere. End of every day, just write it. You don't have to elaborate like that. Uh, CNE, PT, KDP. You don't have to write like that. You write, okay, keels, 2000 rupees. Laugh supermarket, petrol. I want you to write broad topics like that. If you start writing today, and at the end of month, if you just go through this one, you will understand how much you have earned and how much you have expenses, both expenses and income. I show you, showed you the income one. I'll show you the expenses also, how I am writing. But don't think that you have a memory power of that thing and you can write and at the weekend. You can't do that. You have to write it at least daily. At least daily at night, just spend 10 seconds for this one. The very important thing I'm telling you out of these 11 tips, this is the one of the most important thing. Just start writing your incomes and expenses. I will show you the expense stuff also. This is how I write my expenses. If I go to October, September, I have from beginning, I can go like that. So I will show you the latest one. This is May 2020. This is how I have write. Cargills, food, dry fish. That is the way I am writing. This is the one last month what I have written. And then every day, most of us switch on the computer at least for once. And if you don't want to own the computer, just write it in your book. So these are the expenses that I have written throughout. I can show it until the end of the internship time. I have all expenses, all income I have. So just start writing. At the end of the day, you don't have to cut any cost. You don't have to limit any buying, just write it. 
in, in it will deliver you the results from the next month if you start writing this month the results will be from next month just start start writing believe me and start writing okay i showed you how i have written number 3 is you have to stop impulse expenses this is also in sri lankan culture marketing strategies is ex impulsive expenses is one of the most important thing that marketers are targeting because our especially the female doctors are trapped into these impulse expenses so sometimes these impulse expenses are burdening you more than your normal expenses so i want you to stop impulse expenses what impulse expenses means the things that you feel like buying just now that kham gandhi the new again you go to a shopping mall to buy a something else and you come out with a different thing sometimes we go to a supermarket to buy a kilo of rice or some sugar or maybe some vegetable and we come out with certain 10 bulbs and all those stuff that we really don't want and we have brought because just because of the impulse and these marketing people they know how to drag you for these things they put different kind of methods you have seen that buy one get one and if you buy two you will be having another one and you have 50% off and you will be granted a gift voucher when you go for 2500 rupees and if your bill value is more than this one you will be given a chance to win a laptop whole lot of marketing strategies are there so that is to trap you and most of you go and just get trapped into that you yourself go and jump into that trap that is because you have this impulse feeling of buy you have to stop this impulse feeling of buy the first thing that you have to find is purchase that you need the not the that the things that you want so find out the different between need and want you can google and find out there are a whole lot of journal articles even differentiating these two factors and have a list of shopping don't go to shop, don't go for shopping without a list this is what i have been practicing for last many years every day when i am going for a shop even i don't have it from home before getting out of my vehicle i just write it down at least in my hand in my palm i write it down what i am going to buy from it and unless i get a call from my home unless i get a call from my kid or someone at least may bring this one i don't buy anything other than the list so if you have a list you know what what is your requirement you have in your mind maybe once you are coming from home your parents say ah puta make again or do work again they may be telling have that list i am not telling you to cut anything i don't want you to limit anything buy what you need so completing the list is must so don't buy anything more than the list okay right so impulse expenses you have to stop purchase things that you need not than that you want and shopping list is a must and these are the stuff that below you see that things that you are being, being dragged off the sales discounts buy one and get one all those things you know the you know stuff you get how many sms you are getting with this uh, new year and christmas and uh, festival seasons how many offers that you are getting that is because they love you is 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 it so that is their marketing strategy so impulse expenses is one of the main money drainers of you so please stop that so this is the shopping guide this shopping decision guide that you have to have in your mind if you can just go through this one it will be beneficial for you i am not going to describe this one this is a flow chart so if you can afford just go think about if you don't go don't if you can't afford don't buy it and if you can if you can afford also just think that do i really need it now just go for that if it is really need only the rest of the stuff you can read I'm not going to explain so impulse buying one of the main money drainers try to stop that one have a shopping list every time you go out for buy something even for one thing just have the thing written in your wherever you go so number 4 is 
you have to pay your bills immediately this is the one of the one of the major thing that we don't do in your life we collect bills to pay api maase antimata bill gewanne inno we 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 just get our phone bill water bill that bill everything we collect we go once and try to pay it i have calculated the amount that we waste from this keeping the 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 scheduling of this one if you can pay the bills immediately that will save you a lot more than you think so just don't wait to end of the month till end of the month pay your bills immediately once you get them that you know that when your water bill comes you know that when your uh, electricity bill comes which date of the month and you have idea that when your mobile bill and uh, this thing uh, telephone bill what if, when it comes you know that and whenever it comes just clear it off have a schedule with you maybe in your phone maybe in your computer maybe in your diary wherever it is every month 7th you are going to get the mobile bill 8th you will be paying that i'll tell you how to pay also and you are going to get the water bill on 24th i am going to clear it by 25th keep an entry on your diary keep an entry in your phone that you have to clear your bills immediately don't keep your bills to pay in next week amama eliyata gihama gewanawa labana sati okkoma tika ekatu kala ekata gewanawa that is absurd don't go for that just pay your bills immediately number 5 is online banking this is one of the main thing that i want all you to switch over most of us don't utilize this very important facility that have been given by the banks to us nowadays most of the banks give this free of charge some charge small amount even though they charge it is very worth it is really worth of having switching over to online banking why i am telling you this is recent i have been using online banking since last 6 years i have been using sampath online banking now boc and i have calculated the amount that i have saved because of this online banking i told this in this last year good intern program also you may be asked that how i calculated this one it was a little bit complicated one i don't want you to calculate this one but for the last 6 years switching over to online banking i have saved around 350000 rupees going into bank staying in the queue parking the vehicle get damaged by scratches and all the stress that we are having in the queue the time we are wasting uh, in these banks and other all the stuff atms and all the time we are wasting on billing counters the surcharges that banks and billing presenters charge from us the all those when you calculate all those stuff it comes to 350000 which is lot of money for me 350000 means lot of money so that means if you can switch over to online banking you can do almost everything from online banking other than depositing and withdrawing everything you can do now so i pay my all bills by online banking my credit cards by online banking and whenever i want to give some money to any other commitment i transfer money through online banking true that there is a charge about 30 rupees to transfer other banks but it saves more than more 10 times more than 30 rupees for you if you start online banking from today so just think about this one switch out to online it will save you much 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 more than you think so that is the fifth point i want to tell you the amount i saved is true facts i have calculated in there are calculators if you go to calculator.not.net website there is a calculator that you can put for the time for the stress the amount of uh, queuing time amount of uh, waiting the all those stuff you can enter and you can get a value of the value of monetary value of that that amount so just go and calculate if you want if you really want but i don't want you to do that but it saves lot of money that is what i told you how much you can save so number 6 is credit cards so credit card is one of the major thing that drains money out of us most of us get credit cards 
because we think that we can use it in an emergency this is only one lot of pouch and that is why we are taking credit card but after you get one to your hand you are not using it for any emergency you use it to cover up your additional expenses than your monthly salary this is where you start draining money out of you so you should not get any credit card if you are not confident about yourself if you think that i am not confident i am not i am not having that much strong mind with you i had i my mind is weak i can't handle this one appropriately please don't go for credit cards because i have friends who are using two three credit cards and what they do is they clear their credit card from this month salary and they use the credit cards for next month's expenses and this roll out going for months and months credit cards gets accumulated they are paying interest they are paying all the money that they are earning for these credit card settlements and after 6 7 months they feel that this is not going to work they go for a bank loan they clear the credit card from bank loan and start clearing the bank loan for 15 years starting from that day so please if you are going to get a credit card for emergency don't go get it because you are not going to use your credit card that emergency you are just going to use that credit card for your ordinary expenses which you should not afford if so if you really want to get a credit card get a credit card to get benefit out of that there are a whole lot of benefits of credit cards if you want to get those offers get a credit card but don't get it for an emergency that is why i am telling i have four credit cards with me i have been using these credit cards for some part when i have been using 8 years hsbc one now two and a half years boc and selan i am using up to now for the last 8 years i have not paid a single cent as a interest for these credit cards not a single cent so bank banks expect us to earn bank expects to earn from our credit cards they they are not giving credit cards because they care of us they just give credit card because they want to earn from them but i have not paid a single cent for credit cards as a interest but i have got i have taken many many benefits out of credit cards the 23 hotel offers that i told you the 23 hotels that i have gone to that all are credit card offers 50% 60% that and whenever the supermarkets are having credit card offers i just grab that but i have my schedule to settle it in the time in time without paying any interest so i am telling you if you have that feeling of that you can manage yourself go for a card but keep in your mind don't pay any cent as interest to the bank that superior complex that confident that you should have that with you otherwise forget credit cards that is the best thing that you can do next thing is loans this is i am pretty sure that 99% of you have taken some some sort of loan in your lifetime i also had taken one i have paid more than 75 of 20% of now with the 30 lakhs i took as the property loan from government the government servant property loan very low interest rate i had to take that one to build my house but i'm pretty sure you all of you have taken but i'm going to tell you the amount of money that banks are draining from out of you because of this loan when you are going to get a loan what you are thinking is the amount that you are going to get the interest rate and the payback period that is what you are considered you are thinking that okay i'm going to tell 10 lakhs i'm going to pay in 7 years interest rate lowest is 8% to 8.5 so i'm going to go for that the bank is offering 10 other one is 9 other eight you are going for the lowest interest rate but have you ever calculated the total amount of money you are paying as interest to the bank if you have calculated that one you will understand the actual amount that you are paying to the bank is not 8% so we we think that 8% is very low comparing a single figure number very low amount so we go for loans in very low threshold we don't find any other alternatives i know that we can't just do everything from our salary we have to go for loans but ah uh, with the do we takes essential loans only 
that's the that's the question that i'm asking we are taking loans some of my friends have taken loans because the interest rate is low actually they don't want that loan they have taken the loan and deposited in the fixed deposit i don't know whether this audience is also having those friends some of them may be having there if i name them they will they will be here maybe they have taken loans for our interest rate lower 8% and they have deposited in the bank saying that i am getting 9% fixed deposit rate so do you think that it is beneficial for you if i calc if i give a simple calculation from you for you whether it is actually worth or not say that you are going to get 20 lakhs from bank you are going to pay in 7 years and the lowest market interest rate is 8 these days say 8% so you are going to pay 31173 per month and the total amount that you are paying is 26 lakhs you have taken 20 lakhs and you are paying 6 lakhs more than 6 lakhs as your interest so is it worth so is it 8% is it actually 24% of your capital amount so just calculate the amount the interest then that, uh, that you are going to pay the amount the loan that you are having already existing loans if you have 20 lakhs taken for 7 years at 8% 24% of the capital amount you are paying as interest so is it worth that is my golden question you are paying one quarter of your loan amount as the interest so that simple meaning is although you have taken 20 lakhs from bank it is like one quarter is you are paying more one quarter more than that to the bank it's like you have taken only 14 lakhs but you are paying for 20 lakhs so if you want to go for a essential loan go for that one you have to go for the least payback period take the least amount that you can go for if it is 3 years clear it for, uh, from 3 years don't go for 5 years thinking that mata maasakata gewanna wenne poddai ne kiyala don't go for 5 years if you can if you can afford the amount clear it off as soon as possible the amount that you are going to pay as interest will be low if your payback period is low and go only for essential loans number 8 is the worst thing that we are doing is we don't use our smartphone smart we do all the gossip stuff in smartphone if you name one thing a fake name whatever the app you have in your phone you are using it for some other purpose than what is intended for so use your smartphone smartly keep your reminders update in your smartphone use your calendar and reminder for the, the benefit of yours for your benefit i mean I, i told you that credit card payments bill payments and scheduling shopping list everything can be done and writing expenses writing income everything you can done from your smartphone nowadays although you all have one you don't utilize it i just show you a screenshot of my smartphone calendar so this is it i think you can read it so there are a whole lot of payment dates i have entered here hspc card selan card sampat card dialog bill payment and uh, electricity bill payment all those stuff are here so if you can manage your mobile phone in a smarter way than you using at the moment definitely it will benefit you definitely it will guide you and definitely you will save more than you think okay the number 9 is i want you all to have a bank account without an atm card i as uh, you know that most of the bank nowadays offer this documentless accounts so if you have a account you have to utilize that properly and if you don't have one open one maybe tomorrow day after on monday this will save you a lot of money what i am doing is every month on 24th before i get the next month salary the balance i have in my account i transfer this to this atm cardless account so that money saves there and until 
the, 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 if I really want, I can go and get it, but I am not going to use that money for my day-to-day -day expenses. If you have a card, you just can't control that. And when you see a ATM, you just go and withdraw that amount. You can't control yourself. But if you don't have a card with you, if you have to go to the counter, stay in the queue, show your identity card and get it, it takes some time and it will control you. So I want you to open an account. It will be a five minutes duty, five minutes stuff. It don't cost you anything. If you have internet banking, it doesn't cost you anything at all. Please open an account. Whatever the savings you have, transfer to that account and keep it there. The most of our doctors, what they are telling is, that is the main complaint. So that the complaint should, that the problem is not from your earning. The problem is the way you manage stuff, the way you uh, look at those things, the way you, the, your perception is the problem. So try start an account without an ATM card, whatever the amount that you have at the moment you are getting the new salary, transfer that to that account. Don't look at that account again until the next month. So I, this is very practical one, what I have done and I have very good results of this one. And number 10 is, I want you to go for installment plans whenever and wherever it's available. Why I'm telling you this, there are a whole lot of installment schemes are having 0% interest, which we don't utilize. Say that we want to go and buy a laptop. And if you want to go and buy a laptop, if you have money in that, the set account I told you, if you have money in that ATM cardless account, say you have two lakhs, the laptop is 150,000. You withdraw 150,000 and go and buy the laptop. What I'm telling is, if you have the benefit of having installment plan 0% one, go for that one rather than paying your own money. Why I am telling you this is in marketing, in strategic management, there is a concept called time value of money. The time value of money means the amount of money you have today is much, much worth than the money you may be having after one year's time. So the money you have today values more than the money you are going to have in six months time, the same amount. Say that you are having two lakhs now in your account and you are, you are going to have two lakhs in your account after six months. So these two values different. The money you have today values more. That is because there is a depreciation of money every day and today's money you can invest and earn more. Because of these two factors, there is a time value for this money. So because of this, if you have the facility of utilizing installment plans, if you can go for 0% installments, please go for that rather than spending from your own money. This is the time value of money. I told you, keep this in your mind. The first one I told you about the unique value proposition. And now I'm telling you about the time value of money. So. This, that money you have now is worth more than the identical sum in the future due to its potential learning capacity. Keep it this in your mind. Just don't go for full amount payment if you can go for installment payments. The last one, the last point I'm going to tell you is the debt elimination. Almost all of us have some sort of debt with us. You have to have a debt elimination plan. You have to, this may be different from people to people. This is very subjective stuff. You may be not having the total capacity to uh, go clear off this debt in next month. Even I don't have. I have a 30 lakhs loan that I have completed about 75% of now. And I'm having a plan when I'm going to finish that. So whatever the debt you are having, please have an elimination plan. Please have it written somewhere. So when you are going to clear off your debts, when you are going to eliminate this stuff, how you are going to eliminate and how long you will be clear of these debts. So these are the 11 things I want you to practice starting from tomorrow itself, no, at least today itself, not tomorrow, start it from today. And I guarantee that you will have results, not in next week, not in days time, not hours, not days. But if you practice these things for three to six months, Definitely you will have results. 
it is what i had so i am asking you to practice these things so if you have a financial stability what you will gain is this is also another strategic management and marketing point i am going to tell you will have a competitive advantage you will have a competitive advantage what competitive advantage is it is the ability to outperform your competitors we all have competitors in your field out of your field at your home neighbors relations wherever you go we only have competitors we we are thinking api kaatte ekak taranga karanne yanne apita weda no that is what you say but inside you we all are competitors we all are trying to compete with others so the competitive advantage is the ability to outperform your competitors which will which you will gain if you have a financial stability the most important thing is you can get a competitive advantage you can gain a competitive advantage but sustaining this competitive advantage is the difficult thing so you have to have a plan you have to have those 11 tips with you the four things i told you earlier the things that you should have in with you and 11 planning points if you have all those things you can have a sustainable competitive advantage with you which you will be treated better you will feel superior you will feel different than the others in your society so that is what i wanted to tell you i think one hour and almost one and a half hour gone this is the sustainable competitive advantage the amount that you are going to gain more than others that's all i am going to talk to you today uh, i think lecture session was not boring for you all maybe you have gained something so if you have any concerns and you want to clarify anything you can uh, type it in your chat box you can come up with the questions you want few minutes i can give for that one uh, thank you very much and i should thank gmo and the shri team and the organization organizers of this uh, session for inviting me and giving me the chance to deliver this thing thanks thank you very much dr tenwan for that excellent presentation uh, we are glad to have more than 140 participants for today's session and it's time to enlighten few queries if you have any questions please write it in the chat box we'll clear your doubts so we have a question uh, dr tenwan um, what would you advise on a health insurance for doctors and their family and what is the ideal time to engage with that yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, very subjective thing this insurance thing i was talking with uh, dr harita and dr prasad also last thursday about this insurance stuff my personal opinion is this is my personal opinion this might differ from your uh, your level of expectancy and the commitments and the level of your uh, health Uh, what my personal experience and opinion is rather than going for insurance plans the government has offered you this agrahara plan you have this golden package and you have this normal package and you have you are uh, you are compelled to contribute for that one it is compulsory so when you have that thing in with you i don't advise you to go for any sort of health insurance because i think my personal experience when i am calculating the amount that we are paying for health insurance most of the insurance now comes with the investment plan or retirement plan so insurance companies doesn't offer these things because they don't care about you because they care about you they just want to earn from you and if you have that the plan i told you if you can follow up those 11 things and if you have those four stuffs inside you if you can save in that way the amount of money you can have for your emergency have for your health concern have for your retirement benefit have for your investment plan will be much much higher than the amount that the insurance companies are going to offer you i'll tell you as personal experience one minute time one of my friends father very good friends father had four health insurances four different companies i'm not going to name them they 
and that father passed away due to bowel CA. Once they passed, they pay the, the children and the wife wanted to get the claim for that insurance. And the amount of stress, amount of time, amount of money they had to waste on this to get this claim is very unreasonable. At the end of the day, the insurance companies asked for everything other than the dead body. They want 100 and 100 documents, which these people had to go behind everyone, have to collect, have to get signature, that person, this person. At the end of the day, they didn't get the full claim also. So my personal insurance, my personal opinion is health insurance is not worth as we have been provided with this Agrahada thing. I know that some of may, you may be have entitled already. You may be paying subscription and you may be have paid. I'm not going to let you die. That is your personal subjective decision. But my personal thing is, I am not advising anyone to go for health insurance. Thank you for the great explanation, uh, Dr. Tenwan. Please stay on with us. We have a few more queries. Uh, I think you have already discussed about this. Uh, what about the loan rental with interest? And uh, also one more question, what about taxes? Some people are getting loans to avoid taxes. I'll repeat the questions again, Dr. Tenwan. Yeah. Uh, what about the taxes? Some people are getting loans to avoid taxes. Yeah, the taxes, the tax. We had a separate session for tax. I think uh, I I am also into this tax uh, topic that then I take uh, to tell you these things. The taxable income calculation is, is a different method. The taxable income is calculated in a different way what the loan do here is when you are paying an interest amount for a loan, say that you have taken the property loan, government property loan, and you are paying 10,000 per month as an interest for this government property loan. So your total taxable income, that the, say that you have to pay tax 30,000 per year. The amount that you have paid as interest to the bank in your government property loan you can deduct that one from your tax. You can deduct that amount to calculate your taxable income. So that is the theory behind this. So people are not getting loans to avoid taxes. People think that when we get a loan of this amount, we can utilize that amount for something, maybe house or vehicle or some other thing. In the meantime, the interest we are paying can be deducted from our taxable income. That is the way they think. But the, if you are taking a loan, not because that is essential, it is not worth at all. The loan amount of interest that you are paying and the relief that you are going to get from your taxable income is a very huge gap. So don't go for loans to avoid taxes. If you are essentially getting a loan for, your, for one of your commitments, then you can utilize that interest amount to deduct your taxable income. Thank you, Dr. Tenwan. We have a few more queries if you can uh, explain again. Uh, what about buying stocks? Can you elaborate? Yeah, yeah. stock market investment that people have different uh, plans on their investments. Uh, I just want, I, did, I just uh, uh, deliberately uh, omitted this topic from this session because it takes a time consuming one. What I want to tell you is stock market investment is good when the economy of a country is stable. If you can predict for another one year's time that the economy of the country is going to be stable for one year's time, investing in stock market is good. But keep in mind, you have to have a good track. You have to track the stock market carefully. You have to trace it every day. You have to be very updated to buy things and sell things Whenever the time comes, sometimes the stock market changes within hours, within minutes, it gets changes. So if you have time and if you have the commitment to be on track, be with the stock market, 
and if you are confident that the stock market the economy of the relevant country you are you may be you are talking about sri lankan stock market no if you are confident now the sri lankan economy is going to grow at least keep step stable for another one year six months two years time investing in stock market is okay but i am going to tell you you have to have a good financial advisor for this stock advisor and you have to have a very confident and very uh, faithful broking agent because sometimes people when when they know that you are not very familiar with stock broking and this stuff you are not very updated they just ignore you and they go for their high demand people so if you have a very good and confident stock broker and you are if you are having a confident on the economy of the country and if you can put some time and effort on that one stock marketing is okay thank you so much one more query about uh, is there any place for fds in financial stability the thing is that uh, fixed deposits were good investments about 6 months one year back people were used to save their money in uh, fds but if you calculate the if you uh, think about the current context at the moment the fd rates are almost single figures so if you think about 6 months fd rates in any bank it is around 4.5 maximum so the amount that you are going to get in 6 months time is 4.5% of interest if you calculate the depreciation with that the amount actual amount that you are going to gain after 6 months is very very low which does which is not worth so you are saving 10 lakhs in a fd account expecting 4.5 in 6 months it is not worth at all but as a saving method for the purpose of saving not for the earning but for the saving to get for an emergency that if you buy a land with 20 lakhs you can't mobilize that one and get money out of that land in one week's time it takes maybe 2 3 weeks time to put an advertisement to find a buyer go through a broker fail that one and get my text time so your emergency maybe you can't wait for that so for that purpose if you are going to if you want to save if d is okay but as a investment matter if d is not worth these days thank you so much a uh, few more queries dr tenwan um, there are a lot of apps to manage expenses and uh, is it okay to use a yes. mobile phone application to manage yes definitely you can use money. this mobile apps expenses and budget management apps income ex- uh, out uh, income and earning apps there are a lot of things but i want you to be simple as possible so if you go for if you have a simple app that you are uh, fond of and with that you are used to doing that that if you are we are familiar with it's okay but if it takes 2 minutes to load the app and if it takes another 2 minutes to enter it and it takes another 2 minutes to save that and come out it is not worth so if you have a app and if you have this uh, budget management uh, tool with your phone which is very simple one which is very easily you forgot what you can do it very easily that is fine but make it simple as possible because when time goes on you will do it for one week two week if it is a difficult task if it is a time consuming if you have to wait until data comes and wifi gets to your connection you will drop it out you will just go from that one so if you have a simple way if you if you can write it in a notepad of the phone that is fine i don't want you to have a very sophisticated one but if you are familiar with app it's okay few more queries dr janan can you please explain um how to maintain an emergency fund yeah, yeah. that's what so i told you open an account with an without an atm card so what i do is from the intern time this is what i did at that time there was no bank accounts i could not open any bank account without a passbook and without an atm card but nowadays you can at that time what i did was i open an account in the commercial bank the different account i kept that passbook and atm card at my home in kandana i was working in polonnaru so i can't withdraw money in that uh, second account so what i do is i just transfer the amount that i have in my account to that secret account you may name it any other other way so i have that emergency funding in there so once it once it grows to 1 lakh or 2 lakhs 
I just put a FD on the same bank for the purpose of saving, for the purpose of taking it for an emergency, not for an emergency investment plan. Because you can't use FDs as an investment plan these days, as I told you earlier. But to prepare an emergency fund, you can. Sometimes people do dawa sekata pahaga ani kutu karanwa, maa sekata dawa haga ani kutu karanwa. Oka maa se deka kat dawa se deka dawa se nak karanwa. We can't continue that one. But if we have a habit of transferring the amount of money we have in our account on 24th of every month, we keep a reminder in our phone, and we transfer that amount to the account that we can't withdraw easily. That will remain there as an emergency fund. But emergency fund means. not to single aurudu not to birthdays not for christmas not for weddings not to buy that thing and not that you have to define what is an emergency that is very subjective thing it is emergency for me me maybe not an emergency for you but not for ordinary buyings it should be for only for emergency purposes Thank you so much for that uh, great explanation. And a few more queries, all the same questions from our participants. Like, uh, how about uh, buying gold, buying currencies, and investing on bitcoins? Yeah, yeah. these are yeah. these are uh, newer newer topics that uh, people are uh, people are interested of bitcoins, buying gold, and investing on solar systems. These are new things that people are nowadays investing on solar also because. CEB is paying twenty-two rupees per unit for so for seven years and fifteen rupees per unit for the next fifteen years. So people are interested in investing solar. They are, they are, they have uh, their space on your on your the rooftop, so they use that. Right? And sometimes people are investing on bitcoins and some uh, virtual currencies. They buy virtual currencies. And some people wanted to uh, buy gold and keep themselves. These different investing plans. i can't tell that this one is better than that one because that 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 differs from each people to people sometimes i may be i may be a person who want who want confident on my uh, investment the amount i spent ama lakshya 10 ak vidan karana e lakshya 10 wat mata hambe ida kiyala that confident some people want that one but some people want to take a risk and do it some people just freely uh, do it they taking a risk meet gaane you giyat kamak na labaya kambunuth hondai kiyala so bitcoins virtual currencies gold investing on uh, solar panels and the, there are a lot of companies that offering that uh, tree tree cultivations and plantation all those stuff are also there yeah. but whatever you do whatever you uh, invest your hard earned money get an advice from a expert on that field that is my opinion that if you want to start an a store so invest on a solar get an idea from a person who has already invested go for a reputed company talk with them ask them what is the best option you have the amount that you are going to spend and that amount that you are going to gain how long that you are going to be confident that they will give a warranty period for you that is same for the bitcoins and virtual currencies if you are going to going to go for one of them talk with the expert who has been in that field for a period of time and you have confident that he will not lie you and last few days that uh, we heard that certain doctors and certain engineers and high profile people engaged in this pyramidal stuff and cid had arrested few of them they have uh, they have carried out their operations in shrangila very high class offices and all they most of the people who have invested on that uh, company are very high profile educated and high iq professional people so don't get trapped into those places thinking that you can earn fast you will be rich quickly but talk to a person who is who was on that field for a long time who has gained that uh, profit from there and who is who can give you an expert opinion thank you again last questions from our participant what about depositing in your parents accounts as a senior citizens yeah. for fds the thing is that senior citizen fd rates are high i agree with you above 65 years of age that is we are paying that higher interest rates only up to 1.5 million rupees 15 for 15 lakhs they are paying a higher interest rate after that the normal interest rate so if you have the opportunity to deposit in your parents account parents name and gain a higher salary for the first 15 lakhs 
that is okay go for that one but i want yourself to start thinking about a way of you because your parents they will some of some of you may have both parents some of you may be having one parent some of you may have not having anyone so i can't generally tell that if, if uh, depositing in parents account is worth but if you have the opportunity do it for the 15 lakhs but think of a plan which is more sustainable for you which is more sustainable for yourself which can be withdrawn it can be deposited yourself and can be withdrawn for yourself but if you have the opportunity for go for this fds account senior citizen account higher interest rate go for that one but i'm telling you government is not going to offer this higher interest rate forever they will change it time to time the, today it may be 15% today it may be for 15 lakhs and next budget they will deduct it to 4% easily no one can go and complain so i want you to think of a plan which is more sustainable than that Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tenwan. Um, I would like to thank again Dr. Tenwan Vikram Singh for his excellent and elaborate presentation on behalf of the GMOI and Society for Health Research and Innovation. Uh, also, we would like to present a token of appreciation to Dr. Tenwan Vikram Singh on behalf of GMOI and Sri. Thank you all for your participation. And uh, here we are signing off today. Have a good day and stay safe and stay healthy.